Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Um, <clears throat> today I'm actually bringing you a mini series uh, which I decided to make up um, for certain procedures or certain testings or examinations that I had to do um, leading up to the bigger procedures, right? I, I've had three major procedures um, when it comes to my health issues. Uh, one that I got recently, like five months ago, which is the Lynx procedure. Uh, I also had a a Nissen fund duplication procedure and a catheter ablation. So, you know, I've talked a lot about my experience, my symptoms when it comes to the, uh, you know, those, those surgeries. And I figured, you know, people will also want to know more about what it takes, you know, leading up to, to getting a certain surgery, right? There's a lot of examinations. There's a lot of um, testings that you have to do. Uh, for example, leading up to my first knee symphon duplication surgery, I remember I had to get, you know, uh, uh, ECG, which is a endoscopy. Um, I also had to get a um, barium swallow study, um, a monometry study. Uh, I also had to get a, um, which is the, is the other one? There's, an, there's another one. I think I'm missing like two of them. But, you know, there's like a lot of things that I had to get in order for me to get the surgery, you know, or be approved for the surgery. Um, the reason they do all these studies, you know, and surgeons, and surgeons do all these studies is so you can be, so they can determine whether, you know, you will be a good candidate for the procedure because they want the procedure to be successful, right? They want you to, you know, have, uh, your, your, your healing, um, from the surgeries, right? They want, they want the surgeries to, to, to have a, a really positive outcome. So, um, you have to do a lot of testings and, and obviously your surgeon will decide whether you're very qualified and then if you will be a good candidate for those procedures or to see if, you know, to get gather more data, you know, that's also a, a big possibility. For example, for my, uh, catheter ablation surgery, I remember, uh, getting halter monitors and getting, you know, stress testings on to see where my heart was at and talking about that, you know, I'm leading on to talking about today, which is my first uh video of my mini series which would be the holter monitor right um when i got sick um with my health issues back in 2016 you know how they say some things don't lead one day to the other you know they, they usually build over time well my health issues didn't feel that way you know they felt like it was from one day to the other um i came home in the summer of 2016 it was june 9th by the way i still remember that day because of course, you know, my whole life changed. And uh, I came home one day um, from work. I worked as a painter with my stepdad. And uh, usually um, when it comes to, to painting, we usually eat around 12, 12. Uh, we actually grab lunch around 12. And uh, that day we got off very late. I think we got off at 10 p.m. So from 12 to 10 p.m., I hadn't eaten anything. And then I'm on obviously on the way back home, I was very hungry. The only thing that was open was McDonald's. So I had to grab uh, McDonald's and once I ate the food, I remember I was about to go turn the light off and I was about to fall asleep. Of course, that was a bad habit because I just had eaten food. But at that time, you know, I, you know, it didn't really matter to me. I was, I was sleepy already. So I wanted to, you know, go to sleep so I can get up for work the next day. But as soon as I was, uh, as soon as I was about to turn off the light, I remember, uh, my heart, race like skyrocketed it was it was it was so scary to the point where i started shivering i started feeling like this cold shivering feeling in my heart it was very very high and uh i talked about that in my experience of my other videos that i have in my channel so i'm not going to get too much into it but ever since then you know i had to to go to the doctor the next several weeks and um one of the first things they wanted me to do was to get a holter monitor um of course all different cardiologists you know and and all people will have different experiences uh as for my experience though i had in two separate occasions i had two different monitors right the first time it was a monitor for 48 hours which was you know it was it was, it was different i've never felt i never wore a holter monitor before so it was kind of annoying having all those like the leads that you had um having all the the wires and then also you know checking the holter um and checking the little monitor they give you so whenever you feel like you're about to have an episode 
or if you're about to have, for example, like a physical activity, then you will click the button to let them know that, they, you know, to check for this time frame and, and what I was doing then to see if something's off. So, of course, um, I got the monitor for 48 hours the first time, turned it in. And, you know, luckily for me and gladly for me, you know, it came back normal. They didn't find anything wrong. But I kept having heart issues and heart symptoms, right? This heart racing situation every time I did physical activity. Um, every time I would stress this area, uh, you know, I would have these heart uh, rate episodes which was really bad. I know my heart will go very, very high. And when I mean very high, I'm talking like the 150s, um, the 160s. And and I know it was, it was just it was just bad. So <clears throat> eventually I had to get another Holter monitor, which is for a whole month. And that was a pain in the behind because, I mean, even though we all have our different experiences, I can tell you one thing for sure. Holter monitors are just uncomfortable, period. I mean, you're sleeping with them, you're walking, you're taking them everywhere you're going, right? The only time that I was able to take it off, it was when I was going to shower. And um, even then, right, you had to make sure that when you put back the leads, uh, you, they had to be in the right place every single time. So, you know, that was that was a pain. And also you had to change the batteries to the to the holter uh, and to the monitor. I mean, um, because it will run out. of it, it was it was running on battery. So you would change that like every week or two. Um, they provided the batteries and everything for me. Um, and gladly though, like the, the little leads that, that I had, they actually had, um, like different colors. So you had like a little, like a little paper where it told you where each lead, uh, would go. So I had like two up here, one down here, and then two like on the sides, like in the lower rib area. So in total, there were five. So sorry um, about that guys. I got, uh, interrupted. So, so like I was saying back to where I was at, um, I try to, you know, at that time, I try to do a lot of uh, extortion. I try to do a lot of physical activity as much as my body will let me at that time, right? So I try to, you know, walk, fast-paced walk. I try to, um, you know, have intercourse to see if, you know, that, you know, whatever they were looking for, if I had an, an abnormality, that, that it will come out in the, you know, in the when they reviewed my information and when they review, uh, when they, you know, checked the, the halter monitor. So, um, every time I did that, anytime I did any physical activity, I would press, you know, a button on my monitor to let them know, like check this time, because this is at that time where my heart was stressing or I was putting my heart in stress. Uh, so it will make it easier for them. Right. Um, and overall the experience, you know, after a while, you just got used to the monitor having it. And, you know, you just keep thinking that every day, you know, it's going to be closer to, to that, to ending of that month. I actually had a passing of a family member, um, uh, and during that time. And, and, uh, you know, I can tell you that that was very stressful. And I thought really that if I had any abnormality that, you know, it was gonna, it was gonna come out then, right. That it was gonna show then but it never did. I got my results back after I turned it in after that full month month was over. I turned it in and uh, I got my results. I don't, I don't remember if it was like a week or so later or two weeks, but you know, they said everything was normal. The only thing that I had was they found one episode where like my heart paused a little bit longer than it should um, when it beats, right? So I guess it was, you know, doom, 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 doom. And it paused a little bit and it kept, you know, obviously beating right so that was the only thing that i found um but besides that my experience was you know it was it was a, it was a you know chill experience something that you had to get done um ho ho something that I, I was useful for them to gather data regarding you know my my situation and my symptoms um <clears throat> at that period of time so if any of you guys are going through like similar situations or like similar um going through, you know, about to get a whole monitor or so, you know, it was just, just take it slow, take it easy. And I will recommend you try to do as much physical activity that your body lets you, you know, so you, maybe you can catch that because you know, that month it's very important for the, for them and for you to make sure that, you know, that, that everything is okay with you, or if they find something that, you know, hopefully they catch it then and there, you know, during that month and that period of time, once they told me that everything was okay with my heart and even though I had 
you know, feelings or situations where I was like, okay, this is coming out. They're going to find something, you know, they're going to catch something right here. I know it. They never did. Um, then I knew, and I started thinking like, you know, dang, this could, you know, I'm glad this is not my heart, but this is leading more into my gastro issues. This is leading more into, you know, my diaphragm issues. Um, and eventually I found out, you know, uh, after the endoscopy that I had, um, that it was, um, that I had a hiatal hernia, right. And a sliding hiatal hernia. So, um, and I'm actually going to make more videos. Like I told you about this, but I'm going to get my thing. I'm going into my third, um, let's see, what was this? Into my third, um, endoscopy soon in about two weeks i'm going damn i said two and that's three in about two weeks i'm going to get another endoscopy and i'm going to get another barium swallow soon as well because my doctor wants to see you know why am i still regurgitating food why is still food content coming into my esophagus right why like you know my body is not normal because from the last surgery that i had i had the nisim for duplication takedown with the lynx implant you know, what he tried to do was get my body back to normal, back to its, you know, normal positioning, right? Because obviously they wrap your your, your stomach, your knees and around your esophagus when they do the knees and foam duplication. So this time, you know, he wanted to get that, you know, back into place, back where it's supposed to be and, and implant the links. So if I'm still having issues and he's wondering what could it be and the only way we can move on to our next step and, you know, other things it's for him to see um more studies and and more um more information more data as to why my body's acting different so that's where i'm at actually right now with my gastro issue guys um and i'm planning on me you know taking my cam my, my 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 phone and try to record as much as i can for my um uh, endoscopy procedure and also for my barium swallow procedure so i'm gonna keep you guys updated on that um, to the people that have subscribed, I appreciate you guys. Um, you know, please leave, leave comments, leave a like, subscribe. If you got any family member going through like certain similar similarities that I'm going through or certain situations, please, you know, share with them. It's all good. Share with them. Show the love. Appreciate you guys. See you on the next one. Yo, listen, I'm going to add a little bit more content here. So you know how I suffer from like, you know, like heart related issues, me making these videos for like 10 minutes and speaking so much, I'm using my diaphragm area a lot, right? Look how, look, look how, look how my heart rate's at. 100, 103, if you can't see that, it's, look at that, 104, 103. Just making videos and talking to you guys, right? So, you know, I'm not kidding you when I tell you that I have like all these issues with like my diaphragm and my heart. Me speaking so much and for a certain amount of time gets me that way. I don't know why. And it's a struggle. Like my head's starting to like hurt a little bit. And um, right now this is so uncomfortable. So <laughs> it sucks. I'm about to go relax, try to go to my room and relax and just, you know, chill. But I'm telling you, it's crazy. It's crazy. And like, you know, I'm just going to end the video so I can chill because I mean, it's a what? A hundred, 108 now. Look at that. 108. I'm not even doing anything. I'm literally just talking to you guys and making the video. So, <sighs> yeah. Pray for your boy.